Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups, My Breed of Supply. Please subscribe to us. Go to our website, we've got great products. I know that you'll really find them very useful in your endeavor to have pretty and healthy puppies. First part, this is all about puppy contracts. The first part we went over the purpose of the contract, what the contract needs to describe, you know, the puppies in some detail as to what the person's getting, how long this contract's gonna go in a place for, a place for two that both parties can sign it, a health guarantee that you're gonna provide, that you are hopefully gonna do a vet check before this dog ever leaves, and that you want a vet check done by the customer at the other end to make sure that they did in fact receive a healthy puppy and there aren't any significant problems. All right, so great. So now, um, a couple of things before, you know, when you sign this contract, probably that you're gonna pay a deposit. So there's gonna be some way that you're gonna make this uh, contract start, start. And so typically what happens is, is the, the uh, seller wants you to send some money. So as a buyer, be careful here because there are plenty of scams out there. Before you ever get to the point that you've signed a contract, I would recommend that you always either have seen the dog in person or you FaceTime. So you can make sure the dog is there and you can find out about all these things because look, once you get a puppy, and now you complain about the fact, well, the puppy's too boisterous, or the puppy doesn't want to sleep at night, or the puppy poops in the house, they would, be con they would not be covered by any of our contracts. Behavior, you know, but you can ask those questions. You look at a litter, eight puppies, one of them is all over the place, and one of them's sitting on your lap all the time. They're very different personalities, and you need to find out what you want and get the appropriate puppy. You can't do that after the fact. To come back to the buyer, to the seller, three weeks later after you have the puppy and say, the puppy barks all night long, you know, that's for you to fix. That's not for the, that's not for the seller to fix. But you can ask those questions ahead of time. You know, is this breed easy to look after? Do they, do they, are they okay in apartments? Do they need lots of exercise? Find out about the breed and then find out about the particular puppy beforehand. Find out about the seller. If you're not sure about the seller, then find out some other people who bought dogs from that person and maybe call those people up and ask what their experience was. You know, educate yourself that you're buying from somebody who is, you know, cares about the breed and is going to have your back in the event that maybe there's an issue. All right. So you're going to pay a deposit. Well, look, okay. So you paid a deposit. You gave the person a thousand dollars. Great. The, 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 the seller calls you up and says, something bad happened last night. The puppy died. Or we all of a sudden, the puppy that you decided you want to get, there's a problem. All right, so now what happens? Do you get your deposit back? Does that deposit get pulled, pushed forward onto another dog? Um, so you've got to find out how this deposit's going to work. Uh, in fact, any money that you pay, uh, if, you ba if you put a deposit down and you're supposed to get the puppy at 10 weeks and you call the people up you know, one day before they're going to ship the dog and they say, you say, I don't want the dog. What happens to the deposit? There's, there's three things that could happen. You get the deposit back, you get no money back, or the deposit's held and moved towards some future purchase. Any one of those three things. And they've all got their elements, and I'm just not going to go into what they should be because that's for you and the seller to have discussed prior to you paying money. Find out what is okay because things can go wrong. And it's not always anybody's fault. It's just the nature of the beast. All right, so deposits. So then the next thing is, is how you're gonna pay, final payment. Now, you know, for us, somebody who wants to make a final payment after the dog has been delivered, that's never happening. That's absolutely not happening. Unless it's somebody that I personally know that I've done business with before, that would be a different situation. But somebody I don't know at all, you've gotta remember that you as the buyer could be potentially scamming the seller. And you, as the seller, could be potentially scamming the buyer. So you've got to put yourself in both shoes to decide what's reasonable. There is no clear way of being completely safe on this, short of showing up with cash and giving it to the person when you pick up the puppy. Anytime that you pay money to anybody via bank, via bank wire, via credit card, whatever, they've all got their inherent risks to them. So you've got to do your due diligence to make sure that you are gonna get what you think you're gonna get. And that person's not just gonna disappear, never just completely disappear after taking some money from you, because I promise you, it's gonna to happen to some of you. It's a bad day. Um, 
And if you are gonna go meet somebody in a parking lot and give them $10,000 worth of cash, do that in a sensible place. An airport lobby is a great place for this. There's lots of people around, there's security people around. Nobody's gonna stick a gun in your face in an airport lounge. At a police station, go to the parking lot of a police station. I, if somebody says to me, well, where can we meet that I can feel comfortable with? I'd say, well, let's go meet at the local police station. I'm very happy to do that because it protects both me and you. Nobody's gonna do some stupid shit in a police station. But remember, you've got a dog that's worth thousands of dollars. Somebody's potentially got money that's thousands of dollars. The transfer has to happen. And if you don't know the people, do not put yourself in a place where somebody's gonna get hurt because there are some terrible people out there and you just wanna not ever be have to get anywhere close to those people. So make sure that the final payment, you know how this is gonna go down and, it's, and that really should be part of the contract. What's the deposit and what's the final payment? Okay. Um, all right, so now the next part of all this is shipping. You gotta decide how this dog is being delivered. You know, for us, either people come to us Great, we love that. Or we're using a nanny service and the dogs go on the plane, the puppy goes on the plane with the other human beings. And by the way, the cost for that, for most cases, is around 500 bucks when we do that. Now, you know, the, the, the seller could get on the plane and do it themselves, that might be part of the deal. You might pay for that ahead of time. You might be paying for that when the puppy shows up. For us, nothing's getting shipped until we've got all of our money including the shipping. I, I can't, you know, some people, they'll get the nanny to pick up the money, but that's got its own inherent problems. But again, it's gotta be spelled out. How is the dog gonna be delivered? All right, so now you've got a puppy, you've, you've seen the puppy, you've looked at the guarantee, you've signed it, everybody's agreed to what the terms are, you've made the deposit, you've, you've made a final payment, the dog is shipped, and it's in your arms. Um, So now, this is all about problems. This is the one that you don't want to do. You don't want to be part of this. But this is the one that describes what's going to happen in the event there's a problem. So um, I, I want to talk about, you know, obviously things can go wrong. I mean, you know, a, a dog can not have been checked properly. I mean, I've had dogs come to me before that have got inguinal hernias. That's a hernia that's in the crease of the thigh. You don't breed dogs like that. If that dog's gonna be a pet, it just gets fixed and it's be an absolutely normal, healthy life. Uh, male dogs that have come with an undescended testicle, this is a big problem. Typically, if a testicle uh, has not dropped, certainly by the time it's six months old, that dog needs to be neutered. It does not need to be used as a stud dog. Even with a single testicle, it could still produce, but it should not be used as a, uh, as a stud dog. So what happens, you know, you, you, you specifically ask these questions. A good example would be an undescended testicle. That is not a life-threatening situation. But if this dog's gonna be a stud dog, that needs to be part of the health guarantee, doesn't it? You, you need to have put that in there because somebody, somebody can, the seller could come back to you and say, well, it's not a life-threatening situation. I didn't guarantee that. You've got a problem. So anything sort of specific to what you're doing, and for us, the things would be Inguinal hernias are things that you can see in guineal hernias, not an umbilical hernia, not the one of the belly, belly button. Inguinal hernias, undescended testes, testicle or testicles. Those would be things that you know are, uh, are definitely things that we're not breeding that dog, whether it's a girl or a boy, and our primary focus probably was on doing that. So those things, they should be addressed in here. And I've had situations where after I've asked that question, the dog shows up right at the airport, immediately I got the dog, has an inguinal hernia. And it's like, crap, now what do you do? Well, the person who bought you the dog, in our case, would be the nanny. That nanny's not taking the dog back. That nanny's going off somewhere else and it's not taking your dog. So now you've got to go talk to the person who sold you the dog and you've got to decide What's going to happen? So in this contract, it's going to, you know, maybe it's a replacement. You may have a replacement opportunity. Or it may be that you bring the dog back and they may require that you do a vet check at your end with one or two checks to verify there's a problem. Um, so you may bring the dog back, bring back the dog, bring, bring back. You know, these are, these are things that could happen. And then what happens? Who pays for the shipping? You've already paid for the shipping of a dog. The dog's defective. Now you've got to pay for the shipping on the way back. 
you're gonna get another puppy's replacement, you gotta pay for the shipping of that puppy. You've now got three shipments of $500 a piece. You know, it's costing you 1,500 bucks, you know, maybe it's relevant, may not be relevant, you know. So, you know, these are all things that, when things go wrong, the first thing I would recommend as the, hopefully the buyer, by the seller, by the way, contacted you after you received the puppy to make sure that you've got the puppy and everything's good. I mean, for us, we want to make sure that the puppy has arrived in great condition as a happy, healthy puppy. If you've got a problem and you've got to go talk to the seller about it, just trying to find out what you can get done, don't start screaming immediately. <laughs> it's like, um, be calm and collect. I understand that it's distressful when this happens, but at the same time, try to work towards you both being able to resolve the problem. Because what you don't want is you don't want the person just going click, hanging the phone up because you swore and screamed at them. And at this point, the only recourse you have now is, is the only way you'll ever talk to them again is through a lawyer. And that's not a good day. And that's going to be a difficult one. So remember, try to keep your calm. Explain what the situation is. Make sure that you're being reasonable about what was in the contract. You know, if this puppy, you know, a very common situation is, is that you've got a puppy and the puppy is now, you know, being with the, with the owners for a couple of months and they are so attached to the puppy, but the puppy's got a problem. So in most of those cases, the, per, the people still want to keep the dog and now you can negotiate something between the two of you that said it's probably not in the contract. The contract would have said, okay, this is a problem. It is within my, my health guarantee and I will replace the puppy or give you money back or however it's going to work. But it may be that a better solution is that the puppy stays with the family and you discount the value of the puppy or you give them another puppy down the road at a, a significantly discount price. That's called negotiation, right? So the whole point of that, this comment, is, is, is work with your customer, work with your seller to fix problems when they occur because this, a good contract that is not pages and pages long describes what's gonna happen in the event that you have a problem. And that's the thing that's gonna make it much easier for the two of you to sort the problem out when it occurs. Um, okay. I think I've gone into a lot more depth in the conversation we had in the car. I hope that helps people. It's important though. Um, it's important that, I mean, you know, you wanna give your customer who's buying a dog from you the feeling that you're gonna stand behind the dog and then you want to also, as a seller, understand, let the buyer understand what are reasonable conditions that things need to be sorted out, as opposed to it's just part of the breed and really, you know, this is something you've got to work through. I'm going to help you with it. But the time that the dog's got a stomach upset, okay, let's work through this. I'll give you some help with it. But it's, uh, it's uh, not on me. And by the way, one last thing that I think that's not on here that should be in here is your limit of liability. I didn't mention this. Limit of liability. What are you liable for? Liability, I probably spelled it wrong. What, you know, in the event that something goes wrong, let's say that you sold somebody a $5,000 dog, and uh, that dog has got a situation where it's now gonna need to have medication for the rest of its life. And uh, that, that medication is gonna cost that person $2,000 a year. The life expectancy in two years, and a $20,000 potential vet bill. Is it reasonable for them to stick you for $20,000 worth of vet bills? No, of course not. What should happen in that situation is that that would be one, the puppy that either comes back or is replaced based on something that's in the contract. So the limit of the, you need to limit your liability, in my opinion, to the value of the dog. You never want to be in a situation where you know, you've gone to court and the judge says, yep, this dog needs to have open heart surgery. It's going to cost $10,000. It's not in your contract and you're good for it. So limit your liability to some amount. I mean, and also you should spell out what you're going to pay for in the event that there's going to be some kind of surgery done. You know, are you going to pay 50% of the bill up to a certain amount? You know, that would be the kind of thing that I think would make sense. I think that you need to make the other person somewhat liable for this so you don't get silly things going on. And remember, one of the things that I do see is I get some vets who really are crazy in terms of what they expect uh, the dog to, you know, the dog's not perfect. And because of that, they want to do all kinds of things to the dog because they're getting paid for it. Uh, and that's just not reasonable. So, you know, if you're in, if you're going to have something surgery done on a dog, I think that it makes sense to talk to other breeders to see what they would do in that situation to make sure that you're headed in the right track and not being, uh, not going to be overly uh, crazy about what you expect to happen. And remember, every dog has a wart. No dog is perfect. Every dog's, you know, I'm not saying that you should 
be buying substandard dogs. It's not what I mean here. But what I'm saying here is, is you know, make your expectations realistic. You cannot expect every dog to be a show winner because they're not. Okay. Rattle on long enough on this one. Good luck. Remember, we'd love you to go to My Breeder Supply. And we have fantastic Frenchie stud dogs, and that's what we do a lot of. So if we can help you, call us, email us, text us. Be nice to your doggies by everybody. <laughs>